Hi folks, G3 here, and welcome to another instalment of my journey I take to go green. One of the things I've been keen on is researching changing my car from petrol to an electric one. There are a whole range of cars on the market, and over the last 10 years or so, they've really advanced in efficiency and battery size, and therefore the range that they're able to cover. Where I live, I don't have the capability to park off-road and charge my vehicle at home. So I needed to find an electric car that would be able to cope with me making the journeys I do on a weekly basis and charging away from home. So realistically, I knew that I would be looking for a vehicle that could cope with approximately 200 miles of range. One thing that I learned was that you change the way that you drive when you have an electric vehicle. Your mindset is ensuring that you have enough charge for your journey, but you will be stopping on some journeys naturally for comfort breaks and for food. And it's at those times that you incorporate your charging opportunity. So you will stop, charge your car whilst you're using the restrooms or getting food. And in that time, you've got enough charge to continue your journey. So there's a different approach to how you drive these cars. Right, so let's get to it. Let's have a look at my test drive in the MG5 EV. Um, here we are inside the MG5 EV. We're going to have a test drive of the first electric uh, estate car that's made it into the UK from MG, which is a, um, uh, it's actually Chinese owned. Now this is a rather, um, rather large car. It's going to be an interesting first drive. So uh, yeah, we'll get on the road and see, see how it goes. I, I'm not, I will go through the specs of the car uh, at a later stage, but this is just to see uh, an impression, to see how it drives, to show you how, um, how we are with it um, as we're driving. So bear with me. Well, it sounds very nice and smooth. This um, comes with three levels of regenerative braking um, that MG rather confusingly call KERS, K-E-R-S, which is a kinetic energy regeneration system, I believe. Well, it's got a nice bit of acceleration. It's got a very clear display. I uh, believe this is um, a seven inch TFT display in front. They've got the regular dials on either side and then they've got a digital enhancement in the middle to show battery power, the voltage, to give that in the, the digital form. It's very smooth, very quiet. Um, reasonable visibility from the back. It's not helped by having the number plate from the garage in the back which is reducing the vis visibility a bit but equally there's three headrests there which aren't helping the visibility from the mirrors is is good though a bit tinted by the look of it yeah it's got a reasonable bit of acceleration when the foot goes down this can do 0 to 60 mile an hour in 7.3 seconds it's a, a very um, sprightly car for the for the size that it is. That's good regenerative braking when I took the foot off the accelerator there to get us back down to um, within the speed limit. It's a nice quiet ride at the moment. Obviously we're not going um, excessively fast so um, that's not a surprise but the the road surface here isn't the best and it's not um, uh, it's not suffering too much it's quite a um, seems to be quite a comfortable ride both um, we're in the 
um, the top level, the exclusive level, there's also a lower level, the Excite. Both come with the 16 inch wheels and that, I guess, uh, helps with the, um, uh, with the ride comfort a bit. Coming up into a 50 zone again and we'll uh, gradually increase. Yeah, it's very responsive. Very nice. Steering wheel's light, uh, light to the touch. This exclusive model comes with, I can't remember how they call it, it's like leather style, I think it is, or, or, or something similar to that. Nice to hold, it's nice, um, nice grip there. It's very responsive. I can clearly see the dials easily. It's obviously, as with all modern cars, lots of controls on the steering wheel to be able to change various bits and pieces from the um, stereo system to controlling things on the control panel. This exclusive one, the difference is it has with the Excite model is it comes with heated seats in the front, heated door mirrors, so that'll be handy in winter time. It has the leather style seating. It also has wipers that respond to rain, so they will um, automatically come on. It also comes with satellite navigation. The model that I was thinking of though was the base model, the Excite, because even that comes with a host of great features including um, the rear um, reversing camera, the parking camera. So they both have the sensors front and rear to help um, with visibility and, and so range when you're parking but this one also comes with the, um, uh, the camera at the back which is something I really need where I live. Um, parking can be uh, interesting to find a space so it would be good to have that um, visibility. This is quite a, a large car um, compared to my current Peugeot. The Peugeot is um, I think four meters and this one is four and a half meters long so that would be a little bit extra space to try and fit in so the parking camera would really uh, really help. Now the car comes in three different modes. You've got the normal eco and sport modes. This is in normal mode at the moment and as with any of the um, electric cars the, the different modes where well, the eco will turn off anything that's not essential to help you um, prolong your battery life and the sport mode will um, just make it a, a little bit a um, little bit more perky. Uh, but as it is at the moment I'm, I'm quite impressed with the um, with the responsiveness anyhow. Comfortable, the seats giving a lot of support. Oh, the, the ex, um, exclusive model also comes with uh, lumbar, adjustable lumbar support for the driver. So there's a little bit of extra um, support in there. This is, I think, a, a, an extremely efficient car. Not the most efficient out there, but it, and in the sort of combined economy, um, so that's all different uh, levels of driving, city and um, regular driving. It comes in at uh, 3.6 kilowatts per mile. The city level, I think it goes up to, uh, it's four point something, I can't remember exactly. I'll put up on screen what it is if I remember. So it's um, quite efficient. It has a 52 and a half uh, kilowatt hour battery of which 48.8 is usable capacity, I believe. And so that's enough to give you a range of 214 miles, um, according to the WLTP testing. And that's the, the combined range. If you go to city, then it goes up to, I think 276 miles of capability. Now, obviously those are in extremely favorable conditions. And so that's sort of best case scenario. I don't have details on on what's likely with the regular driving. My expectation is that with, um, with good driving practice that we should hopefully be able to um, get 170 perhaps. Um, that, that would be my, um, my hope. Um, let's go in here. There we go. Let's see what the reverse is like. So nice, clear camera. Yep, 
Yeah, that's a nice camera. That's a nice camera. Okay, liking that. Okay, so let's have a look around. It comes with 16-inch wheels as standard. The exclusive model has the silver rails down the side. Um, it looks quite an attractive car for being an estate car. It's got a rather spacious boot. Um, so it's got the covers to, um, to cover the, um, the back there to keep it nice and quiet. It's, I say, 460 odd litres of um, space in there. Um, got some netting to keep the um, charging cable in place. It's got some nice lines to it. The, um, the brake lights seem reasonably high and visible and it's got this raised one in the middle there. And the charge port is just in the front here and it comes with the, um, the CCS and Type 2. So that was just a little um, push to lock that and it's back in place. So there's lots of leg room in the back and it's got a couple of USB charge ports in there to keep uh, passengers happy and charging their devices. It's got a couple of ISOFIX um, points as well. It's a very nice um, electrically adjustable seat. So you're able to adjust it forwards, down, back and, uh, and through these, uh, which makes it very, um, very handy to, for a quick adjustment. We've got the uh, start and stop functionality, the various different, um, the rotary dial for um, changing um, gears, the curve selection, so that's the regenerative braking, the different mo modes that we can choose, so that's sport, eco and normal, range of um, controls for air conditioning and uh, heated seats and the like. Get my notes because I'm not going to remember everything. So, the MG5 EV, so front wheel drive, um, the one thing about this is the space. So normal boot capacity is 464 litres. If you take the cover off, um, the cover that's covering it, it is 578 litres, that's loads. But if you put the seats down and take that out, it comes up to 1,456 litres of space, which is phenomenal. Charging, getting to 80%, it will be um, approximately 50 minutes because it can take up to 50 kilowatts um, CCS. Also has a Type 2 connector as well. It can do um, a max speed of 115 miles an hour. And as I said, it's 0 to 60 in 7.3 seconds. Comes with a seven year manufacturer's warranty or 80,000 uh, 80, miles. Uh, when it comes to charging, you could also charge on a three pin plug and that will take you about 18 hours or it will take approximately eight and a half hours if you're using a seven kilowatt home charger. Standard features that it comes with, we've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It is an 8-inch um, colour touchscreen. There are four USB ports. It comes with air conditioning, which is automatic on the exclusive model, but it's manual on the Excite model. They both come with DAB and a six-speaker with um, 3D sound. They have front and rear electric windows on, um, on both. It comes in five different colours. That's white, blue, black, red and silver. Currently, the Excite retails at £27,495. With the government grant, that takes it down to £24,495. But there's an offer that MG have at the moment, trade up, plug in, and you're able to do a trade in, um, so a scrappage on your car, of um, £4,000. So that takes the cost down to £20,495 if you're trading in a car that you've owned for at least six months, I think it is. The exclusive, so that's the, the top level, uh, retails at 29,9950. So once the government grant is taken into account, that's 26,9950. The trade up plug-in offer offers slightly more. It's 5,000 pounds that MG are offering there for a trade in. Um, so that will take it down to 21,995 pounds. So those are all the stats and the details. But for now, 
we're going to switch off because Mrs. G3 is going to uh, have a go on the car as well and, uh, and see what she thinks of it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later. So there you have it. That was my test drive of the MG5 EV. So what did I think? And also, more importantly, what did Mrs. G3 think? Well, we thought it was a great car. It was very responsive. It was very quiet, very comfortable, loads of space in there. Things that we weren't so keen on, that would be maybe the visibility out of the back. That could have been a bit better. All in all, we thought it was a great car, really good value. And it's something that we will be looking at further. And I'll keep you posted as to whether I do put in an order. So thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. As always, if you enjoyed it, then please do click the like button and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so that you get notified about when I load up new videos. I've been researching electric vehicles for some time now, and I have followed a number of channels on YouTube from people that cover electric vehicles. I have got a wealth of information from those. Top of that list would probably be Bjorn Nyland. That's Tesla Bjorn. I've loved following his videos, both at home in, uh, in Scandinavia and also when he was in Thailand driving the MG ZS EV. I've also followed the fully charged show with Robert Llewellyn leading the, uh, the charge there, quite literally. That was one of the first channels I watched a long time ago. They cover a whole range of interesting topics relating to electric vehicles and I can thoroughly recommend them. Also, Andrew Till, who is uh, relatively local to me, he's based in uh, Canterbury in Kent, I absolutely love the videos that he's put on, especially the ones where they were traveling to Italy and back. They were very informative. I can recommend EVM. He covers a number of different topics that are really useful. So there's a range of channels that I have followed that I think that you could potentially follow as well so that you can find out more about EVs. But of course, you can always ask me questions in the comments section below and I'll do the best to answer them with my limited knowledge. Until next time, bye.